we're going to practice balancing chemical equations. The goal here is for conservation of matter. We want to keep the same number of atoms on both sides of the reaction arrow. And then um, there's another conservation law for balancing equations, which, which is conservation of charge. That will show up in a particular type of reaction, uh, redox reactions. We have re redox reactions here, but some are harder than others. So we check for that, and if that, if we don't have that balance, that means we have to do a different type of balancing for those reactions. So we just go through and balance each element sequentially. And uh, after we finish balancing, it's good to go back and recheck everything. Sometimes as we balance the second or third element, we unbalance the first. So we go through uh, nitrogen. We have one nitrogen on the reactant side, one on the product side. So it's, it's, it is balanced. Hydrogen, we have three on the reactant side, two on the product side. It's not balanced. We can't add hydrogens by themselves. So we have to find a common factor. So three times two will give us six. So we'll multiply this one by two and this one by three. And I just unbalanced the nitrogen. So I'm gonna go back and balance the nitrogen before I do the oxygen. Uh, since we have oxygen by itself here, it tends to be the easier one to balance. So now we have two nitrogen, one nitrogen. So I'll add a two in front of this. And while we're balancing these reactions, we can only put numbers in front of the compounds. Once we're happy with how the compounds are written, we don't try to squeeze any additional numbers in to that compound. So we're saying that we're going to have extra molecules of these compounds participating in the reaction. So for oxygen, on the product side, we have two. So we're going to be multiplying the coefficient times any subscript that we have. Uh, no written subscript is an implied one. So we have two oxygens plus three is five. So the nitrogen and the hydrogen are balanced. So I can do a intermediate step here. So I have five oxygen. If I multiply um, this by five halves, five halves times two will give me five oxygen. We don't like fractions in general. Uh, we do use them at times when we want a one in front of a particular compound. But in general, we don't like to use them. So I have a balanced equation, but I want to get rid of this fraction. So I'm going to multiply all these numbers by that two to get rid of that fraction. So this two is going to turn into a four. The five halves will turn into five. The two turns into a four. The three turns into a six. Now let's check to make sure that it's a balanced equation. So four nitrogen, four nitrogen. Four times three is 12 hydrogen. Six times two is 12 hydrogen. Five times two is 10 oxygen. We have four plus six is 10 oxygen. So that is a balanced equation now. For the next reaction, Let me, see, let me add in one more symbol here. We don't always need to show the physical states of these. Sometimes the physical states are necessary, especially when we're doing equations, uh, calculations based on the energy of reaction, because the physical state will affect the energy of the compound. Um, or in this case, it's showing that we're forming a solid from two aqueous solutions. This turns this into a precipitation reaction. So it tells us what type of reaction that we're dealing with. When we're balancing this, okay, we have uh, one calcium as a reactant, one, three as a product. So we put a three in front of here. We have this C2H3O2, that's a, the polyatomic ion acetate. We have it on both sides of the reaction. So it's not being modified. 
So instead of balancing the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen individually, we take the acetate as a group that we're balancing. So we have uh, two acetates. So I'm going to give myself two acetates over here. Now I have three sodiums, but two sodiums. So I'm going to do the common factor. So I'll turn this into a two. Two times three is six. Turn this into a six. So that, of course, unbalanced my acetate. I have six acetate. Six acetate. No, I didn't do it originally, correctly originally. So uh, phosphates, I have two phosphates. I have two phosphates. So I think it's balanced. So let's go check. So three calcium, three calcium, six acetate, six acetate, six sodium, six sodium, two phosphates, two phosphates. So we have a balanced reaction. So a um, oxidation reaction, we're reacting stuff with oxygen. Uh, generally, this would be a, a combustion reaction. Um, a hydrocarbon plus oxygen tends to burn, release heat and light. So we have two carbons. Give ourselves two carbons. Six hydrogens. We have two. Six divided by two will give us three. Three times two is six hydrogens. We have O2. We have two times two is four plus three is seven. So we can do that trick. Only the oxygen is left unbalanced. So we have seven divided by two gives us seven halves. Again, we generally don't like to have that fraction in there. So we're going to multiply everything by two. So we have our two, our seven halves turns into a seven, two turns into a four, three turns into a six. So let's check this. Two times two is four carbons, four carbons. Two times six is 12. Six times two is 12 hydrogens. Seven times two is 14. Four times two is eight, plus six is 14. So that's a balanced reaction. On the next one, we have um, one iron as a reactant, two as a product. So we'll put a two in front there. Now that gives us two sulfurs. We have one sulfur, so we'll put in a two. We have O2, we have three oxygens plus four is seven. Seven divided by two is that seven halves. And again, we don't want to keep that fraction, so we multiply all the coefficients again by two. So this two turns into a four. Seven halves turns into seven. The one turns into two. And the four, the two turns into a four. We check this, so four iron, two times two is four. Four sulfur, four sulfur. Seven times two, 14 oxygen. Six plus eight is 14 oxygen. So that is balanced. So let's do a, just a couple more. So the next one we have a, So we have our copper two oxide turning into copper one oxide plus oxygen. We have one copper, two coppers. So we're gonna put a two in front here. Now we have two oxygens. We have one plus two is three. And we don't have a, let me see, a single oxygen to work with. So let's go the other way. So we have two oxygen, we have one. So we want one over here. Um, 
So to get one over here, that would be a one half. One half times two is one plus one is uh, two options. And again, we don't want that one half, so we multiply everything by two. This two turns into a, a four. We got two, and the one half turns into a one. So we have our uh, four copper, two times two is four. Four oxygen, two plus two is four. Uh, next reaction, we have a one iron. Uh, one iron, one cadmium, one cadmium, two nitrates, three nitrates. So we can't divide one into the other, so we do the common factor. Two times three is, is six. Three times two is six. That gives us three cadmium. So we put three over there, two irons, and we put two over there. The last one, we have one copper, one copper one silver, one silver. It looks like it's balanced. We see charges, so we check the charge balance. We have a plus one, we have a plus two, so the charges do not balance. So this is a simple one to balance, but uh, once we see charges not balanced, we might use our redox balancing techniques, which come uh, a little bit later in this chapter. But in this case, we can get a two plus by putting the two here. So two times a plus one gives us a plus two, equals that. And then we need our two silvers. But uh, otherwise, we have another balancing technique for redox reactions.